and welcome to Studio Utani. What's the story, Mother? I'm Matt, and uh, today I'm joined by Baker and Justin Macy. Hi. The boys are back. You're getting the band back together. <laughs> um, so we, uh, the three of us, watched an interesting movie. Uh, this week called uh, Titan, uh, I believe it's uh, pronounced. It's from uh, Titan. From Fr- Titan yeah. is from France, um, and uh, it's not exactly a science fiction um, film, but it's got some interesting threads that we kind of related to Alien. So uh, we thought it'd be cool to kind of talk about it because it is a pretty cool film. Mm-hmm. Um, first off, though, a couple of um, a couple of uh news tidbits um the box office of dune um so the film hasn't even been released in the u.s yet and uh it's already uh crossed the 100 million dollar mark now in the first right. yeah in the first episode me and baker were talking about dune and its possibility for success and is it you know gonna have enough appeal to make money but so far it seems to be doing pretty well Uh, what are your thoughts on that people are definitely hyped i think the trailer was really really good people like the director because of blade runner uh it had a lot of steam going into it but i'm I'm super happy it's it's looking good right now it hasn't hit america yet like you said so it's gonna be big 100 million is already super impressive during the pandemic and yeah because the budget's like uh, Justin, you were saying earlier, it's like 165 million. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit more on that and say it's like 200 million, um, because you know that's just Hollywood accounting. <laughs> but um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah normally they say you don't turn a profit unless you make twice the reported budget. Yeah. So mm-hmm. at least. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it does seem like it's on track. So um, I, I think. Uh, 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 Denis Villeneuve, um, he, he said recently in an interview, he thought his career was going to be over after Blade Runner 2049 because of the terrible box office of that film. Oh, that's true. You know, yeah. I was thinking just now, too, it's also it's got a crazy popular cast. So I'm oh. sure that helped a ton. Yeah, so I didn't even oh, yeah. factor that in. Yeah, everybody, everybody is in, in is in this movie. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, it, yeah, I, I think uh, Dune could be on track to be a pretty sizable hit and it might be uh we might finally get we might get that part too you know and that would i be, hope so yeah that would be rad because um, this is the first book right the adaptation yeah it's the first book but it's only the first half oh that's the- right i think you told me this in the first podcast yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it's just part one it's kind of like it and then the <laughs> chapter one at the very end it's like uh, but um you know hopefully you know, kind of like how it was almost a self-contained film um, in a way. Right. Um, hopefully I'm, I'm, Dune will also play the same way. Yeah, I, I'm projecting more of like a serialized Lord of the Rings franchisey kind of thing, but we'll see. It would be cool if it's standalone, if it could work as a standalone, the sequel. Sure. I, I, I mean, I think that's smart. I mean, it's like you, there's obviously more story. I mean, we know that, but if it's, you know, can kind of, you know have a beginning middle and end and if we never got part two that would be extremely unfortunate uh yeah but, um i i think it would be nice i i think it would be better to have kind of a rounded out story um than one that leaves on a cliffhanger that never gets resolved yeah i mean the stories if they adapt the books they have the whole story right so yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. that's the plan. It's just, right. you know, this is such a big movie and such a big story. Um, it makes money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. far, looking good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll that's see. That's hype as fuck. Yeah. We might, uh, we might, uh, three of us were talking, we might like look at David Lynch's Dune. <laughs> I had to love that. Because I don't think, I, I I haven't seen the entire thing. Have, have either of you seen the entire thing? So I, I saw half of David Lynch's Dune. And then when the sandworms showed up, I kind of pieced out, faded out, turned it off. Um, there may have been a medicinal, completely legal oh. uh, baked good involved. 
and I couldn't handle it. So it's it's just too much. Oh, I mean, yeah. that's isn't that like one of the more perfect things to watch though? Because it's I mean, I it's thought like, so. Yeah, yeah, it's like sandworms and space drugs. That's right. That that's was my the... thinking as well, Matt. But <laughs> unfortunately, I was I think too distracted. But I, I don't know. I'm curious to re-examine it with a clearer mind. Yeah, yeah. And, I, uh, yeah, I think it would be uh, fun to kind of watch the the Lynch version and then see the Villeneuve um, version <laughs> um, and see how they stack up because the Lynch version is um, not widely regarded. Uh, but it's it notorious. Have... It's yeah. notorious, yeah. That um, would be a great uh, clickbait if you say like Dune review and we talk about that one like next weekend after it's out or yeah. a week from next weekend, I guess. Like, uh, you're like titled, uh, put, titled. put the video out a week early so they think we're yeah. talking about the new one we oh, saw it doing early oh well and, now we, and now we just we, saw it at like yeah, we 8 a.m well now we just spoiled the surprise <laughs> if you watch uh, this podcast yeah 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 then you're in on the joke um mm -hmm. but um but yeah um that's exciting news it looks like um the the new dune is gonna you know is probably going to do well and we might get that part two and that would just be dandy wouldn't it um Maybe. yeah <laughs> um other bit of news um so i totally forgot um that i had pre-ordered metroid dread on uh on the nintendo switch and a it just uh downloaded uh the other day and i was like Oh, I'll give this a shot. I've never played a Metroid game before, but the, the games are pretty notorious for being inspired by Alien. And I wasn't sure what I thought, uh, what I was, um, what to expect with this one, because I know like the original Metroid games were 2D uh, side scrolling. And then I think around the third one, maybe they went into more of a 3D direction. But yeah. then this one, it's 2D again. And I wasn't sure what to think of that. Mm. Um, but playing it, it's actually pretty brilliant. And um, I, I, I like what they're doing, uh, what, what they've done with it. Um, there are a couple of um, cutscenes where. Um, it's uh there there's some shots that are like directly lifted out of alien and aliens like just no shame <laughs> yeah uh, and it's it's kind of fun um it's i know you two haven't played it yet so i it's this is just kind of me talking about but I, I i think it's a pretty cool game and honestly it's you know really really kind of scary in, in some ways like it the title dread um, it, it absolutely earns that title. Um, there's mm -hmm. some very, very intense moments uh, in this game. And dare I say, I kind of had, I was a little bit more scared at the, uh, playing it than I was uh, playing uh, Aliens Fire Team. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> What's it rated I, I, though, isn't it? Like, I think it's very teen. But oh, it, teen. Yeah. It, uh, Metroid Dread, it, not, uh, Aliens yeah, yeah. Fire Team is M, but it, it's it's not because it's explicitly gory. It's just because right, it's, the atmosphere. Yeah. It's really good. It's setting up uh, these very uh, tense situations with a particular enemy. Oh, um, I see. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It, it, Dread is, is a very worthy title of this. Um, so if you, whether you're a fan of the franchise or not, like I said, this is kind of my first Metroid game. Um, if you like Alien and you've got a Nintendo Switch, um, Metroid Dread is pretty, uh, it's, it's going to be up your alley. Uh, it's got my recommendation on it. Um, it's got that Utani <laughs> vibe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, yeah. It Watching kinda... some gameplay now, I see what you mean. You're being like chased by like robot dogs yeah. and shit and yeah oh yeah the, well that that particular enemy uh the uh the emmy i think it's called um it's uh, it's a special kind of enemy that you encounter throughout the uh throughout the game and it can't be killed by normal means uh and that's kind and avoid and it can instantly kill you so there's <laughs> this just pervading sense of dread anytime you're like in one of the areas where the emmy is present sure yeah um but
but uh yeah check out metroid dread it's it's pretty rad um but let's yeah yeah but (laughs) let's uh let's get to the main event um we saw this film called uh uh, justin how do you pronounce this again is titan 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 Titan. yeah um french film uh it's from the same director of a a film called raw 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 that came out a few uh years ago and it was a french belgian co-production um kind of a disturbing coming of age story about a a young girl that um discovers that she has a thing for cannibalism oh raw Uh, yeah 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 Yeah. what what did you think i was talking about titan (laughs) because at first it is similar Oh, well, it's and the same director, it. so I mean, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. kind of expecting the same vibe. Um, but um, like I was saying earlier, it's not exactly sci-fi, uh, but there are some kind of interesting threads that we kind of related to Alien a little bit. So we thought it'd be an interesting film to uh, talk about here because uh, you know, I I thought it was pretty good. What did, what did you guys think? I loved oh, it. Titan. Oh yeah. yeah, it's going to be a circle jerk this this time. And I'll just say, as well, that I think major spoiler warning. I went into this completely blind, and I'm really glad I did. I know anything about the movie. Okay. So. Yeah. 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 Um, that's that's a good point. Um, if you're in if you're in any way interested in seeing this film, um, uh, you might want to put off our discussion of it until you've seen it. Be um so. Yeah, um, I guess at this point, we'll just say spoilers. Um, Big spoilers. Yeah, uh, from this point on. Um, It should be available in every major market. It got a very wide release for a French movie. Yeah, that's actually, that is, that's honestly kind of shocking to me, given Mm -hmm. the nature of the material and everything. Like when me and Justin went to go see it uh, before I did, but he, he, he went again um with me and we were the only two in the theater. yeah <laughs> it was a similar experience yeah um but i guess um it, you justin you said this one the the palm door mm-hmm. yep. yeah yeah um i i guess since parasite uh won the palm door and was a huge hit um they're just kind of going ahead with that on, it was the uh, same u.s distributor uh neon oh really? neon. yeah oh yeah neon I, I, oh i didn't catch that yeah yep the same people that released parasite um but um i i think with in parasite's case it was i think a very timely movie and it was speaking out on a lot of social ills that a lot of people you know are dealing with and so in that way parasite kind of transcended language um mm-hmm. but uh titan is not quite as easy subject matter to grasp it's <laughs> it's very uncomfortable and that's mm-hmm. kind of why i'm shocked that it got a wide release um, yeah you think because it's close to halloween spooky spooky time yeah a little yeah, bit that could have something to do with it it, yeah. it is if you're used to body horror it is ex- mm-hmm. very accessible from that perspective yeah. But l- yeah. let's let's talk about this movie. What what is this movie about? This it's uh, it's this uh, this girl, this young woman. Um, uh, she's Alexia. sexually attracted to cars. She's sexually mm-hmm. yeah. That's kind of the thing we get from the very beginning is that uh, she had an accident. Uh, a car. She was involved in a car accident when she was uh, a little girl, and she has this metal plate put in her head as a result. And that's kind the kind of implication there is that she just kind of developed a fetish or fixation on uh cars so yeah this this woman Mm. is uh, sexually attracted to motorized vehicles um and then she (laughs) she kind of just goes uh i i don't know if she just goes psycho or this was something that was just (laughs) kind of developed in her but she goes on a murder spree it was kind yeah. of implied from the beginning that there was something off in her head before the accident uh, even yeah. yeah yeah before the accident even yeah yeah um it's and it, yeah it, it's honestly like a lot of those things like are just really really um oh the, the her killing people it reminded me of like quentin tarantino stuff it was so like mm-hmm. 
yeah. uh, proud of proud of the way it was shot almost like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, it reminded me of old hollywood musicals a lot of those <laughs> scenes the way that they would switch from long takes you know they mm-hmm. kind of just emphasize the movement uh, mm-hmm. within the scene you know into cuts that would yeah. you know change the point change the perspective so you can then move to another elegant yeah. movement yeah mm-hmm. and, and that's kind of and, and that's kind of an interesting point because another thing I, I I notice is like the more people that she murders, the more it almost seems to get kind of almost comical. Yeah, I was just so surprised how much I laughed in this movie because I mean it wasn't too much. I wasn't like you know every yeah. Yeah, ten I minutes was, even, but yeah, there were some parts. <laughs> I I wasn't I wasn't laughing per se, but I'm like. It, it get it does get to a point where it's almost like this is playing like a screwball comedy. Like I got a high very body. dark comedy. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Oh, I just I just inexplicably murdered this girl, and uh, now I have to you know hide the body. And then there's like slipping on banana peels practically. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh-huh. and I'm just like, it's almost like is this like is, am I supposed to? Is this actually happening or is this like just a fantasy? There's a lot of that. And I have a theory about that, but I don't want to jump ahead too much. Well, but I, I also want to say the, the shot where she kills the guy with the stool, the bar oh stool. Oh my God. The way that was shot was, I cringed as much, way more than I laughed in this movie. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. I, I, that, that was a good shot because you don't actually see it happen. All you do is see the, um, mm-hmm. the, the stool, uh, the leg go into his mouth and then she just sits on it. And then you hear the, yeah. you know, the crack and that's all you need. It's pretty fucked up. The sound design too. You can look away, but you'll still yeah. hear what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I, the, what's with, what is the connection there? Do you think it's like, like, is there like a connection between like her, sexual attraction to cars and her disdain of people because I yeah I, I think I, so because it's like I almost like a rejection like of the organic in a way is kind of the way I was looking at it like hmm. she almost despises the fact that she is um she's part human yeah yeah and that she's <laughs> got some kind of attraction to humans as a result of that and she's like then that's kind of how i was reading her her killing spree a little bit um, Interesting. Yeah. I, th- I saw it more as like internalized trauma where like yeah. she had this bad thing happen to her in this car accident and so she associates the car with this big, uh, mm-hmm. you know, obstacle in her life, she was mm-hmm. in that neck brace for however long, you know. Yeah. yeah. And then somehow that melds with her sexuality, because like the first thing we see after when she's an adult is her stripping on the cars and like yeah, yeah. sexualizing the cars, and a lot of people do that with trauma, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a complicated thing. Yeah, sure. No, absolutely. Uh, that's that's but, kind of what I saw the the pregnancy jumping ahead a bit well well well, yeah that was actually something i wanted (laughs) to get into the first like major thing that happens is that uh she it what she she fucks the car right she fuck and then the car fucks her yeah it's not entirely clear but she's got like the seat belts are like restraining her arms like you know yeah. like a, a you know a bdsm or, or something um uh kink kinky stuff um oh, yeah. but, intense but, stuff Passionate. yeah but 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 um then it's like implies she's impregnated by the car and mm-hmm. this whole movie i'm thinking is the end of this movie she gonna like give birth to a car at the end right of uh, course yeah <laughs> and that isn't that far off from what happened sure yeah, yeah yeah no it isn't um but it's um there's a lot of like interesting themes about um the organic and the mechanical um which kind of in my mind r- reminded me a lot of like hr giger type stuff um and then there's you know the aforementioned like body horror aspect of it of like i have this thing inside me Mm -hmm. um and it's you know there's some there are some very alien-esque moments in this where it reminds me of alien three with ripley and her oh yeah a little bit actually yeah like like almost like not even sure how to feel about it like on on one hand it's like i you know you can be like 
a proud mother and at the same time it's like i don't know if i if i feel anything towards this thing that's growing inside of me you know mm -hmm. it's almost Having like this, and it's, almost, it's it's not human too in both cases right. it's like she has this metal thing this alien yeah. metal thing in her head alien and like, like but, not organic <laughs> That, see that goes to me that goes back to what i was saying earlier about her kind of being at odds with her own like organic nature mm -hmm. a little bit i i, I almost see that. i almost feel like that it, there's something there too with the baby like kind of at odds with like how she feels about you know being a mother or, or feels about the child that you know maybe or being human being like yeah it being a human maybe wishing it wasn't human um mm. <laughs> some you know i i think it's you know there, there's a lot of different ways you can read it yes. um but um it goes in a, a by like act two or like midway through act two i'm not exactly sure how to it was it was a different structure it didn't follow a three-act structure to me to be no. really in it, two two parts yeah, yeah the when the when the father being, the, yeah, when yeah, Vincent so, comes in, yeah, so yeah, uh, halfway through this this movie, it almost becomes a completely different movie, mm -hmm. um, and this character called Vincent shows up, um, who believe uh, so Alexia, who's just been on a huge murder spree, is trying to hide her identity, and she ends up um, disguising herself as a. Um, a missing person that she saw uh in a uh in a subway like uh, on a poster on her, yeah yeah and, and that was a pretty messed up scene because the person had a broken nose and she oh, was yeah. trying to <laughs> break her own nose to to match that and it's like uh, oh yeah and that, <laughs> i know that, I, I couldn't i i was like okay i don't i i get it i don't need to watch this um it's so and i have to say too some of the stuff they were so quick with like her surgery at the beginning is like bam bam she's in the brace or accident mm -hmm surgery yeah. brace like in 10 seconds yeah. and then they hold on these other scenes for so long and it's like just yeah. very well, deliberate clearly well i mean in, the, in that case they're just like setting up the story really fast and then in yeah. this case it's like it's actually like the anticipation or suspense of the moment where i'm actually gonna like you know oh yeah cause harm to myself but in any case she ends up disguising herself as this missing person and then um the missing person's dad vincent shows up and it's kind of questionable like is does he like actually think alexia is his mm -hmm. son or is he just like you know i'll take i'll take it um in either <laughs> in either way um alexia um goes on goes on with it uh so it's kind of a weird you know relationship that develops from that point and as much as we've been talking about how disturbing this movie is the, there's stu the stuff that happens with vincent and alexia in this or in he um he thinks it's his son adrian mm -hmm. um it it's actually really super sweet it's very wholesome this is one of the yeah. most like it, it, it's disturbing, one of those wholesome movies. It's one of the most bipolar movies I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it's so like fucked up and violent. And then it gets really super tender for a while. And it's just like just vulnerable. And like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time I watched the movie, I was waiting for the for Vincent or uh, Alexia to do something horrible yeah you know, i was i mm -hmm. felt like it was just around the corner any minute yeah. it almost does at one point yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's like something's gotta give it yeah just... this, is, this isn't gonna work out then the second time i watched the movie i i was you know i had a completely different perspective i thought wow this is mm -hmm. really sweet you know the two of them really connecting on yeah yeah and alexia does not talk much at all no, no and that actor is... the performance to not have to have like such little dialogue yeah. Yeah. is like crazy yeah yeah uh, I thought, you see them just connecting through purely movement. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, yeah. Well, I, means. yeah, yeah. I, it's you know she she doesn't speak because obviously she doesn't want to give her away her voice, and she also doesn't want to be vulnerable towards them. But um, <laughs> but yeah, Justin, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I was like something's got to give because 
both of these people are entering this uh, this relationship under completely false pretenses, or at least in the case of Alexio, it's not it's unclear of Vincent if he really believes that this is his son or not. Right. Um, um, I didn't think maybe I was confused, but I didn't think she looked much like the son. I I honestly I didn't I was telling Justin this I didn't pick up until about 30 minutes after we were into this new plot that like right oh she was trying to make herself look like the person on the subway but I didn't like I by that point I actually kind of forgot what that person had looked like so I I I don't know I was like a a dark haired like more Hispanic looking kid but yeah. Maybe I was I was confused, but I, I, thought I, sure. I, I think I thought, that's intentional to be like to put it in your head of like, does this guy really believe that's his son? Right. As we well, find out, he doesn't uh, well, the, care well, who she is. That but, she right, right. Well, right. But it was like, um, what was it? Uh, he, when he's at the police station, it's like the detective or whatever is asking him. It's like, you know, are, are you sure? And he says, you know, you don't think I, I don't recognize mm-hmm. my own son. Right. And when I, I realized I, that put that line in like mm-hmm. much better context. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, you know, there's this dance between the two. And actually, we have I, I have a little bit to say about the dancing in this way. Justin's oh. already kind of mentioned it a few times. But um, there's this dance between the two. And um, there does come a point where um, Alexia, a.k.a. Adrian, uh, you know, starts to kind of reveal more of, of the femininity a little bit. And... Oh, well, you're talking about the, the scene at the end, or well, close to the end. Well, it, well, it's like, well, first there's like, you know, there's a whole scene where it, they're in like the garage, right? So Vincent's like um, a captain of like a team of first responders, and mm-hmm. there is like all these, you know, these young, <laughs> you know, testosterone fueled men uh, on his team, and then there's you know Adrian, who's the social outcast, and they end up like putting him on the spot, and the ends up doing this very um or she ends up doing this very sensual dance um like when she was stripping at the beginning yeah yeah, and and it really kind of you know throws them through a loop and Mm -hmm. but and and it's kind of questionable at that point it's like what does vincent feel it's like is this like a betrayal in some way of the relationship that's been established but then it, it finally does get confirmed when you know he accidentally walks in on her um undressed and right s- sees her you know for who she is but then he like just you know ties the towel back around her mm-hmm. and just says i i don't care who you are you're my son and it's right. like it's like oh my god that is like the sweetest thing ever it like it doesn't play as creepy at all yeah, and I think the scene with his ex-wife too puts it in context who Vincent is a bit more of like yeah. where she's telling she catches uh, oh, she, Alexia as uh, a woman. Okay. And well, well, like, well, I think she already had her suspicions. Well, like, she I think she knew it wasn't her son for sure. Yeah, yeah but, but yeah, she she knew that Vincent needed mm-hmm. to believe that you know Alexia to have someone. Yeah. So that's why she like told her, you know, you, you know, you better not, you know, screw this up. You better, you know, mm-hmm. take care of him. And yeah. And, you know, I was like, I thought that was going to be a bad moment, but then right. the, the mom ends up kind of, you know, she's also kind of playing a game here. So I, there's a lot in the movie. I think about like identity a little bit. Oh and, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and like, there's almost the, so the theatrics of, um the social behavior or social expectations which mm-hmm. is the performativity of gender yeah. oh yeah mm-hmm. oh definitely definitely well explored yeah um and um the uh, you know dancing plays like a big role in this like we were saying at the beginning um you know alexia is a dancer she's like working at like motor motor car shows and she's doing provocative dancing on top of the cars because at one shot at the beginning was crazy yeah. i yeah, kept I, thinking like is gaspar Noé involved in this because like yeah. these raves with the firemen just yeah felt so i was laughing at those because it felt so it was like after this woman dies right and then suddenly yeah. they're all raving like yeah, yeah. celebrating 
Well, it's, I mean, the dancing plays a very big role in this, and there's a lot of it in this movie. And, oh, yeah. Um, Justin, you, you're saying it was kind of like, it almost was like a musical in, in some, a musical, but mm. with movement instead of singing. Um, and I, mm. I thought that was very interesting how it kind of played, um, you know, the mood and kind of used the dancing to sort of, um, push forward the relationship a little bit um did you have any any particular thoughts about that or or did you say everything oh i think you're muted justin oh uh, yeah i mean all throughout you see the different ways that the characters would dance together to communicate different things like there's the scene um when vincent and alexia dance together i think you were, mm -hmm. you started mentioning it uh, mm -hmm. earlier and they start hitting you they can start like bumping into each other hard Mm -hmm. while they're dancing yeah and like you see there's like there's anger but the anger eventually kind of turns into love between the two of them you see that entirely through their mm -hmm. movement during that scene yeah mm -hmm. and even when uh alexia like you know almost murders him like you know threatens him with with the um what is it uh what is it again it's not a... like a knitting needle yeah a knitting yeah needle. yeah or um, he said something yeah, about sewing and, but he doesn't he doesn't like treat it like a threat he like just yeah he treats it's like he's it, expecting it yeah it's like this like this is like the most like alpha chad move ever <laughs> i mean it really is he's just like he's just like uh, you know it's like oh you're a young man and you're you're angry and that's just expected and he just you know he doesn't treat it her, it doesn't treat uh adrian or alexia any any less than before even after that and i'm like that was kind of a big moment because that for me anyway i thought that mm -hmm. was going to be like yeah, something's gonna something bad is going to happen at some point and this is going to be it and then it doesn't it just keeps going further in this direction of being really sweet and developing this relationship yeah um, he, he needs that person so bad that i think he didn't believe mm -hmm. that was his son brought yeah. them in he must be thinking they're some kind of criminal or something because yeah. he would want to go with this guy pretend to be his son so right. when that happens it, it did feel like he was like yeah mm -hmm. i'm still i'm willing to be here for you and she had never had someone like yeah. that after she showed herself for that yeah and that, being was, that. and uh, another thing that we haven't mentioned yet that vincent um it has kind of a, a some kind of drug addiction of some kind right or I think it was steroids steroids, ste steroids yeah, sure um but he's uh it's clearly affecting him uh negatively uh physically and um like he can't even he there's like a whole scene where it's like he can't you know do a pull up and it's it's kind of clear that the steroids are maybe losing their effect um mm -hmm. but there, there's a scene where he gets you know he basically kind of passes out and alexia is going to take this moment it looks like to you know finally do him in and then she realizes that she can't and it's just like those little beats and mm -hmm. and seeing how the character has changed it was very beautiful the, uh, when and, she she talks to him too for the first time then she calls him oh yeah Papa, yeah oh my god yeah that i almost was just like i i i don't want to i i don't want to say that i almost teared up at that moment but i was just like right I'm like, you oh know my God, it. that's really sweet. And he's passed out. Like, that's just for, she's mm -hmm. just trying that. Like, she's not yeah. trying to manipulate him or anything. Yeah. It's like, you can and, tell at that point. And, and then also all the people on the um, on the team, like all the guys think Adrian is really weird. And, um, but, but then Vincent keeps on jumping to his defense. It's like, my son will talk when he wants to talk. And, you know, who, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, what does he say? He says, you know who am i i'm god and this is jesus my son and <laughs> yeah. it's like when jesus you know said wants to say something he'll say it and then when he does you'll listen and like it's like pretty you know <laughs> he lays down the law yeah it really does i i, I like that vincent character a lot yeah that actor and, was phenomenal too yeah yeah and, and yeah and um you know alexia as well and like how both mm -hmm. characters change and evolve um but um talking about the the sweetness of it uh, there are still elements of the uncomfortable throughout and there are some pretty um because during this entire time that this 
relationship is developing, um, Alexia is pregnant and that's like a ticking time bomb that threatens to destroy the entire charade. And, yeah. and um, she, like there, there's some scenes in this and I have to believe that it, it, it's fantasy in some way, but it's like, mm-hmm. it's more stuff like as, the, as you know, she you know balloons as, as she gets more of a pregnant belly um the like we start seeing like the metal like underneath her skin and then she's like lactating like oil yeah and, shit. and there's like some pretty like g- gruesome imagery in there uh um, yeah yeah it, it the movie doesn't let you forget that it's uh it's still dealing with like this body horror element she, when she first thinks she's pregnant doesn't she take her like blade thing and like yeah. ch- check her own oil essentially yeah. oh yeah i i i thought she was like like a to... pregnancy test i guess yeah i thought she was doing like, oh, self-abortion okay. yeah. i thought it was kind of a cheeky like oh no 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 she was trying to do as a, a home uh, that makes way more sense yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, we know how we know how women's work on this podcast, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's uh, um, yeah, it's not like in this movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as far as the uh, yeah. sci-fi pregnancy. Yeah, the the sci-fi. Uh, the weird... But I'll say, I I think that is again an extension of the like trauma idea. Like she's mm-hmm. carrying it's metal because of this incident, and I almost think like she clearly hated her dad before that happened. So I wonder oh, if yeah. there's like if it's implying some other kind of pre-existing trauma with him because like and then all the scenes with him and her mm-hmm. they're like spaced apart they don't look at each other they walk right past each other yeah so it, yeah. i think it's trying to communicate something there yeah and that's something we haven't talked about it's like her actual dad yeah she right she at the beginning she has this incredibly hostile relationship with her dad from the very beginning the very first scene she's uh mm-hmm. Before trying, the accident, yeah. Yeah, before the accident, she's trying to agitate him. And then as she gets older, she just despises him and ignores him. Yeah. And it's like, I think the scene when she finally, like, after she murders all those people and she's like leaving home. And I, I think the visual metaphor of like locking her dad inside mm-hmm. of the bedroom is right that's a that's a pretty powerful statement there um and there was the literal house on fo- she was killing him yeah really right the house down with him inside yeah that was that w- i realized that later too so it was kind yeah. of a weird scene the way the fire spread yeah it didn't it didn't click with me right away that that was what's happening but yeah it is a- absolutely i'm setting fire to my old life Mm -hmm. um and it's you know it's pretty it's pretty disturbing but then um like i said it goes into this whole other thing and there's like a weird mix of like just the sweet and the um and the very bizarre and uncomfortable Mm -hmm. um um but let's uh you know unless there's there's more that we want to talk about with this movie um i think maybe we can move towards the the end scene um oh but, sure I, uh, the only other thing <laughs> uh, did you guys feel like a racer head vibes at all as well with like know, this, i mean this... i mean anytime you got you're talking like a a deformed monster baby you gotta right. go back you gotta go back to a racer head of course but i mean in terms of it being like analogous as well like his, like it's not literally an alien in a racer head, right? I mean, I guess it's interpretable. Well, a racer but... head is well, a racer head is very surrealistic. Um, right, it had some of that energy. It's okay. Very oblique too. So. Yeah, true. Like, like I, I kind the difference between a racer head and a titan for me is that um, a racer head is a clear allegory. Uh, oh yeah 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 whereas titan almost seems to take place in reality uh but then it has these kind of fantastical visual moments that Mm -hmm. are really just more more or less there to illustrate what the character is thinking and feeling at the time 
Okay, I'm on the, I'm on the same page with you there because I guess in Eraserhead he's literally just anxious about being a father. Yeah, it's literal. It's just exaggerated. But... Yeah, yeah, basically. And there's a million mm-hmm. ways you can read Eraserhead. Um, but you know that's another movie that you have to have a really strong stomach to watch. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But um, I think where the line kind of does get blurred with this though is at the end where um we finally kind of get to the big birth scene and it's kind of a really a powerful moment because it's the, almost like the final accumulation of this relationship between Vincent and Alexia and you know she tells him you know her real name um mm-hmm. uh, in the scene but it's also this thing where uh, Vincent um uh, what what happened to him earlier that he he kind of almost it, it almost seemed like for a moment he he was like maybe like suicidal like he almost yeah. catches himself on fire yeah well like, i love it's small bit too but the, it's cool how they juxtapose that with her stomach pain from the pregnancy yeah. and obviously but um I think it was just he's confused about what kind of love he's feeling, right? Yeah. Like he's he's yeah. he loves he's, this. He finds out she's a woman. It's not his son, but he loves his son. He misses his son, and yeah. And then, but yeah. she's being like sexually attractive now too with the dancing. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It yeah it that's seems what seems like that as well. She and it's this isn't really. It might be me kind of making it more symmetrical, but it seems like there's definitely shit going on with her relationship with her dad too again maybe before the accident happened where she's yeah. always needed this kind of love from yeah. her father so right yeah it, it, it kind it, of weirdly fit together in this like taboo puzzle no i i think you're absolutely right it, it's um you know that's kind of what i was getting i think vincent feeling confused about what kind of love he's he's feeling was kind of the impetus for that but the reason I, I i was asking was because there is a moment in this where alexia is like starting to like go into like labor a little bit and vincent there's like a moment where vincent almost leaves her and then you know she cries out and says no don't don't and then he he comes back and you know helps her deliver the child and the, and it's it's a beautiful moment for me because it's almost like there's nothing it in spite of everything that's happened um there's nothing but acceptance yeah uh, and i i just found that to be very very profound in a way um mm-hmm. <laughs> but the it's like i will help you bear this pain you yeah. don't have to do it alone and he's needed He's yeah, kind of needed for something. So yeah, absolutely. And the um, then in the birth scene, it's like um, she does end up. Uh, it's, it seems that she she does die in labor. A uh, labor, but it's not. Mm-hmm. It's not entirely clear. Like because this is like literally like the last scene in the movie. We don't get any extra scenes after this. Passed out. I mean. Yeah. 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 But um, we do see the a little bit of the baby and it's clearly kind of a meld of like the uh organic and um and the mechanical a little bit um i almost wanted it you know just just go full on giger give me a giger baby um it's about time yeah yeah we really i i think you know society is ready for this take Um, my money yeah but it's uh i i thought it was um it was fine like design wise it, it definitely um you know it, it gets across what it needs to get across but it's it's also kind of unclear it's like is this literally like uh an organic I, mechanical baby or is what are it's like the fan it's, it's it's a metaphor just for her pain and someone else shouldering it for her with her Ooh. you know i yeah. think the whole pregnancy is like this like trauma that she's internalized right Mm-hmm. And it, it just at the end, it's just that he's coming into the fantasy sequences we've seen with the pregnancy and he's helping her bear that it was my my 
thinking that again it's so i mean not vague but ambiguous in a lot of ways mm -hmm. yeah well I, I i think that's you know a really good way of looking at it though um i was just kind of like focusing on because i i was like the whole movie's been leading up to this so it's like i want to see this baby what what the hell is this because i like my prediction was like what is she gonna like give birth to like a little remote controlled car or something <laughs> like, like like i i wasn't entirely sure but um you know i i think it is there is something kind of beautiful about it in addition to like i'm gonna shoulder the uh, shoulder your pain it's also this um like you know there, i mean as with anything with like involving like a childbirth it's like you know a life goes on kind of thing mm -hmm. um and you know you know second chances and all that um yeah um i'd yeah. be lying if i said i i wasn't hoping for a car baby <laughs> <laughs> i i mean i kind of just expected it. the movie set it up sure of course yeah so, yeah, it's like, you know, you don't put a gun in the first act if you don't shoot somebody <laughs> in, in the third act, right? Um, right. But, but um, then she literally fucked the car. I mean, there's so much I, where yeah, it's I know. just yeah, her alone. I, it's yeah, like... I, yeah, unclear. Like, because the only other person in the movie that she has sex with, um, or maybe it, it, she gets intimate with that one girl, which I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you, Justin, was that the same girl from Raw? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't yeah. even know. She had the same. The character had the same name too, Justine. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Oh, it takes place in the same cinematic universe. <laughs> well, it's an alternate cinematic universe, right? Because a different character, unless it's the same character, I guess. Well, well, Justin just said they they have the same name. Right. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> okay. You, okay. Where, you can make a case for it. Where's Nick Fury when we need him? Um, <laughs> But, Nick but, Fury uh, comes in in the last act. He's in the yeah, door. He go, yeah, he comes into the door and says, "Are you Vincent?" Why we need you... that baby for the Avengers. <laughs> exactly. We need a new Iron Man. <laughs> um, yeah, no, literally. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, titanium. But but yeah, it it's like it, so that was the same girl from Raw. But yeah, that's the only other person that she has sex with, and. You know, um, and she and she hurts her too. So I mean, it's oh, like oh yeah, and then yeah, oh, yeah, pain confused yeah, with sexuality. Yeah, and she does straight up murder her too. Uh, well, that this as well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. some other shot. Yeah, that actually, all those scenes made me uncomfortable because of like I could feel like it's like yeah. like like when she's like you know like pulling on her yeah you know, chewing chewing on her her nipple ring that was the hardest i I'm think just i like, cringed with all this body the, horror yeah that that's, was the part where that I was, was like, the most. that was the most uncomfortable i've ever been watching when she gets uh, her hair seen, caught on the nipple ring i'm too. like oh oh yeah all yeah. i can think about there was like me and three like film bros in the front row and this one old lady in the back in the, my theater <laughs> and all i could think about is like that i, I wonder what this woman thinks of this yeah but, yeah i mean that i mean it just yeah the, those scenes were I, I i could feel um the the girl's uh pain in that scene i'm like yeah oh, oof, yeah oof, shit. yeah uh, but um um yeah ultimately though it, it i i think it does yield um it's set okay. up too in the shower yeah. scene. Sorry to cut you off. <laughs> oh no! Oh, right, right, right. I was saying. Ult I would say ultimately, as as much as uh, Titan kind of yields some very, very uncomfortable feelings, it also yields some very, um, you know, beautiful ones as well. And mm -hmm. um, I, I I think it's a very, very powerful film uh, in that way because it's like it doesn't feel. It, it, it's it's dealing with uncomfortable subject matter but it's very very mm -hmm. vulnerable and very truthful and um yeah I, I, it took me a little while because then i when it ended the first thing i said to justin is like justin what the fuck was that <laughs> uh, well, yeah I mean... but 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 <laughs> it, it, it grew on me rather quickly and looking back on it and and the feelings that i had towards it and um I, I think it is a beautiful film um, if you have the stomach uh, to get through some of those scenes. Um, Highly recommend. Yeah. And beautifully um, shot too, just to oh, yeah. mention as well that all the stuff with the mirrors was really cool. Or that oh, one oh shot yeah. In the hallway, right? Where it looks like she's coming down the hallway and she comes around the corner as a mirror at the end of the hallway. Yeah. 
Yeah, Still well, things. yeah, almost like the drawing a parallel, like you know, between the two characters that way. And mirrors are great cinematically. Uh, yeah, yeah. When you use them right, and yeah. the camera's not caught in them. <laughs> uh, it, it's hard to use them wrong, though. You know, well, I, I, except for yeah. Well, just if, a, a camera guy if, reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have the equipment or crew in them, but it's like if if <laughs> yeah. you know, if you can get past that, it's it's not <laughs> low bar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, mirrors are great because it's, you know, it's the reflection of, you know, the self, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the bathroom, I'm sorry to keep going on about this too, but the last thing I have in my notes too, it's just the bathroom, the way it, this, the way it looked, the pink, it felt very like Kubrick almost. I don't know, the, yeah. just that kind of like bright, we, it's like, you know, what's going on in here is like yeah. really well, dangerous <laughs> and bad, but it's, it's lit so like. Well, isn't Kubrick more, Kubrick was more stark though, right? It was I more, guess, I'm thinking of like Clockwork Orange with like the pastel green house well, and like well, stuff even, like that. Well, even then, I, I, there's still like the, the starkness there. Um, I'm not, yeah, it was more, it was more of a mood, I guess, yeah, like the, sure. the, the raves, the well, fireman sure. raves. Sure, sure. I, I'm just, I'm, I don't, I'm trying to think of like, like Kubrick and I'm like, I, mm, I mean, I mean, not not to disparage you. If you remind you of Kubrick, that's you know, that's you know, that's cool. I just like for me, I'm I I don't know if it reminded me so much of Kubrick. It's more of um, I I, I don't know. If, I, it's kind of hard for me to think of another filmmaker. It's all like, yeah, compare that's the like style to compare it, it though, but just yeah. very very sharp contrast. Like that sure. is the steroid room. Like you know, sure. you know. No, no, and, I yeah, I, I get what you're and, saying. Uh, the scene too where he asks for help and she opens the door he's got the syringe in his yeah, ass cheek and she just closes it and nopes out i left yeah it, but yeah that's great well it's yeah that, yeah yeah i mean that again there's just like a lot of great moments like that where they decide just to sprinkled look, in the dark yeah comedy. yeah looking looking past these issues like uh you know my dad's you know on steroids and he shouldn't be using steroids but he also needs help Mm -hmm. um, and i'm like yeah and it's i've like, killed it's like, people so yeah yeah it's like it's a film about broken people uh trying to make life more bearable for the other people in their life um mm -hmm. two yeah. broken things that fit together yeah oddly enough yeah, yeah um so yeah titan um great film um if you can stomach some of the violence and body horror um you uh you will uh you will like it it's it it's a good mixture like i said i keep saying it mixture of the sweet and the terrifying um oh, yeah. and uh yeah if you like body horror in general um this is a pretty good one um one yeah. last thing what, what yeah, sorry that? i just i felt like i steamrolled a bit is there anything justin you wanted to add before we move off you, got, you guys about covered it okay cool yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, and no, and you added a lot too, Justin. Um, but uh, yeah, the one last thing I did want to say, um, when uh, Alexia was playing um, as uh, Adrian, I, I could not help but think like uh, she looked a lot like Eminem, and <laughs> and, and and we even get it like the uh, the mom spaghetti scene. Oh, we dad spaghetti. We do get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it was dad spaghetti. Yeah, yeah. So so, uh, so I, I I quoted that to. Justin in the theater and Justin's like what <laughs> um but uh <laughs> I, I kind of see it yeah um but anywho yeah Titan uh great movie um 10 out of 10 would recommend um yeah mm -hmm. great film um so I think that about wraps it up so uh if you enjoyed this uh discussion um please give us a like um subscribe to the channel, uh, leave us a comment, and um, we will uh, catch you uh, next time. Um, Maybe with uh, David Lynch's Dune, perhaps. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah possibly. Let's, uh, let's keep that in mind. All right, guys, take care.